Welcome back. You're watching the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Harry Reagan. And in this segment, some role reversal. Emily Liska, Executive Director of the Historical Society, is the guest, not the interviewer. Welcome back. Well, thank you. It's good to still be here. <laughs> and we're going to focus uh, at first on archives, a very important part of the Historical Society. I would suggest the most important aspect of our organization. People know us as an organization that goes out into the community offering presentations to clubs, organizations, school children, and we do that actively. About a hundred off-site presentations a year by the Jacksonville Historical Society. Just if anybody wants a presentation, we give those presentations about North Florida history, Jacksonville history on a myriad of topics and love doing it. But one of the most important things we do, it, the most important I'd argue, is collect and archive the history of Jacksonville, Florida. And I've brought with me just a few, very few examples uh, of the ways we do that. And some of these are, I think just about all of these are acquisitions within the last, uh, Oh, two months, or mm -hmm. in one of them just this last week. So let's take a look at uh, what you have. I'll here. start with the toughest one to, uh, to hold lift. up to the camera. <laughs> oh, gosh. And, and, and anyone would tell you who is involved in archiving, don't do it this yeah. way or have a stronger person. This, uh, we just took in a collection of approximately 3,500 city. Duval County record books mm -hmm. and there was just uh, no other plan for retention other than the Jacksonville Historical Society. We step forward. This is one that it just excites me to know in. Uh, we have many, many of these volumes. This volume dates to the 1920s. These are last wills and testaments of individuals living in Jacksonville, Florida. And so let me turn it to a camera that can get it. I'm a, I apologize. This is I'm not the pro on television here. And so don't can hurt we get it? Oh, that. that's okay. <laughs> Let's see. I'm, I'm trying to do any everything counterintuitive here. Okay. So and, can we get and it? And so there are lots of these books exactly yeah, like lots this. Lots and lots, and they're you huge. You only brought one. And they they probably weigh. I'll pretend they weigh 25 pounds a piece. Not yeah. that much. I'm saying it because it would be embarrassing if I told yeah. you that they're probably about 20, and I'm not in the best of shape. So another example, and uh, so if anybody is is looking for records. Uh, Duval County related records, we will have uh, a lot of them at the Jacksonville Historical Society. Not all, but we can give you the rundown. Also, eventually you'll be able to find all this on our website. And viewers who might not have kept up with everything that's going on recently uh, might not know that we have room to accept this kind of thing that we didn't have before. We do, now, and thank you for bringing that up. In October, the Jacksonville Historical Society acquired Old St. Luke's Hospital, not to be confused with the 1914 one that's in Springfield, or mm. was in Springfield. We acquired the one that dated to 1878. Back during the yellow fever epidemic. That's yeah. right, and and then was uh, abandoned or, or left vacant initially in 1914 when the new one was built out in uh, Springfield. And of course, next door to this this uh, old St. Luke's that we acquired uh, is the Florida Casket Factory. They are literally, when they almost touch, they're so mm -hmm. close. And so people are always amused by the location of a casket, casket factory next to a hospital. I hate to tell the real and true story, which we are bound to do at the Jacksonville Historical Society, but the real and true story appears that the casket factory didn't get its start until after the hospital closed. But nonetheless, it continues to be a source of great pleasure mm -hmm. that people discuss the proximity of the two buildings. Sure. Uh, and I, so we have lots of room, all total 20,000 square feet for an archival repository. I'd like to show another piece of Jacksonville history. Yeah, this is one. It's not got, okay. we'll open it up actually. Oh, okay. okay, you're gonna, thank, thank you very much, Harry. This came to us two weeks ago, and typically we have archival gloves, but as long as your hands are clean, this is a point of real interest between archivists, whether you should wear gloves or not. But this is a collection of Andrew Jackson Tiger's Claw, 
uh, from, uh, and they span, they're all bound, and they span the years about 1934 through, ni roughly, through 1954. I've and this was a, a high school newspaper. It was, at Andrew yeah. Jackson High School. And of course, Andrew Jackson was one of the three schools that uh, evolved out of the old Duval High School, the only high school in Jacksonville for many, many years. And then in the fall of 1927, Andrew Jackson opened, Robert E. Lee High School, and uh, Landon High School mm -hmm. opened. And it appears that Andrew Jackson took every single uh, 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 identifier of the old Duval County School. Took the colors, the mottos, Tiger oh. as their mascot, really? yes, Tiger's Claw, even their sort of literary magazine slash, it evolved into the yearbook, the Oracle. That, that original high school is, uh, is still Oh, actually there? still standing. The and old used Duval, for housing now. That's right. Old Duval High School still stands mm -hmm. uh, downtown, just about two blocks uh, east of Main Street. Right. I'm, I'm going to guess that... It's right behind the Community First Credit Union. Not, it, it, that's right, well, and that's, I'm that's blanking the name. I'm supposed to know <laughs> these street names. It's... it's Probably, uh, maybe Ocean, and it's I'm, ocean, yeah, I think, is it, yeah. I'm sure it, it almost and, is and Ocean. It's, uh, <laughs> and I guess we, a number of schools have turned into residential uh, places. A number, yes, yes, in, a, in new life. Exactly, elementary schools, others here in town. Mm -hmm. The one uh, just out of San Marco. John which Gorey. Is, yes, John Gorey is another. So it's a wonderful reuse and beautiful old building. Mm -hmm. So that's what spawned our schools, and I thought it was kind of interesting. I also found. Uh, not found. We just received this past week, last week, uh, a program from the traditional Andrew Jackson Lee High School Thanksgiving football game uh, played in Jacksonville for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. There will be many other programs for many other years. Obviously, uh, they were always played in what was called the Gator Bowl at the time. Mm -hmm. Now it would be the main stadium downtown. Uh, uh, where we have Everbank Field, mm -hmm. uh, but of course it's gone through many transitions and remodelings sure. since then, if you want to call it a remodeling, but uh, nonetheless that's where the game was played and clearly Lee High School was the home team for this game because they're featured. The Jackson mm -hmm. football players are mentioned by number, but Lee has their principal and their band, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sort of struck by the size of the band. It was small, but what even uh, struck me more is this is uh, only a few days before Pearl Harbor is oh. bombed, uh, you know, the bombs at Pearl mm -hmm. Harbor. So this is riveting to, to hold this, and people didn't know. And, you know, only days later, we would be at war. So what a, what a treasure that we just received last week. Now, since you lugged it all the way over to Comcast, <laughs> uh, we, we really need to show I this I don't know uh, that it's going to save it, no. but it's a great old crate. And it was, it's a crate of the uh, East Coast Fruit Company. And you know, Harry, they just don't make crates like this Evidently, anymore. Yeah. They, they don't. You and could get a few oranges in there. You, you could get a lot of oranges. <laughs> and here's the other thing. The oranges would not get bruised in this kind of a crate. So crates were... Uh, were really substantial mm -hmm. back in the day and uh, you know the the one I'm still looking for so if anybody out there has one it's a crate and it's stamped oranges from Harriet Beecher Stowe Mandarin Florida uh, that's yes. my goal but this is a great crate to have. Now um, let's talk people may have things that they think right. that, that we just had uh, Antiques Road Show we and did. The people brought things down there but people may have things that they don't really have room for or want to keep and they think maybe they're historically important, they could bring them to our archives. They could indeed. We do accept uh, gifts, contributions. Uh, of course, the most popular part of our archival repository is typically photographs. Mm -hmm. But you see, I brought anything but today. So we take actually dimensional objects like the crate or mm -hmm. our plate. Uh, also last week we received a beautiful perfume bottle that was manufactured in Jacksonville. I didn't realize those were made here. So just exciting objects uh, arrive almost every week. And by the way, there is a, a gentleman from Andrew Jackson High School, graduated from Andrew Jackson not long after I did, and he has actively been sending uh, some of these items, the perfume bottle and the program I just saw, showed from the Lee Jackson and the bound uh, Tiger's Claw, all came from Jack King And someone who has something and may be in doubt as to its historical value, 
can bring it. Uh, in, in other words, we don't guarantee that it'll have a prominent place in the historical society, but we would like to look at it. And, and the point of uh, preserving this, it tells Jacksonville's story, mm -hmm. and researchers, we hope for centuries to come, will use these materials. And as time goes on, we have to find new and clever ways to preserve these materials. Mm -hmm. Paper can't last perhaps forever. Some paper lasts longer than other paper. So um, we, we are trying all the methods to preserve and we actively scan as we can what we take into the archives. Now, uh, just a few minutes left, uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, an important anniversary that we yes. talk about every year. Every this year. This month. It's our tradition. I don't know that mm -hmm. anyone else celebrates right. it, but we do, Harry. No matter how many years, we're going to always celebrate because it's the birth of Jacksonville. That's right. We're going to come in with a cane or our walkers, and yep. we're going to celebrate <laughs> this because we are pushing 200 years as a city. This June uh, 15th, will be the 191st anniversary of the founding of the town. So Harry, we only have nine more years to we'll do this. We will yeah. make it. Yeah. And, uh, and this is important that the citizens know our town is 191 years old, nearly 200. And if they understand the story, Florida became a territory of the U.S. In our possession of the U.S. in 1821, and that set the scene for the founding of Jacksonville, Florida, 11 months later. Mm -hmm. And that founder, of course, the acknowledged founder is a man named Isaiah Hart. We finally named a bridge for him in 1967, but he founded this, and it was named by 61 citizens who gathered and petitioned, uh, well, I say they named it, uh, not exactly. There was a suggested name by one person, Jackson, Cray Andrew Jackson, mm -hmm. but 61 people. Who never uh, came to the town. Who, very good, yeah. never stepped foot in this place. And yeah. I think all historians are in agreement on that. And uh, Andrew Jackson certainly has his own story. And I think you'll be hearing about that perhaps uh, on, our, on a later show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have a very big uh, celebration for the 200th, I'm sure. Yes. A lot of time to plan for that. I, I hope so. And in the meantime, if people want to join with the Jacksonville Historical Society and learn more about our history, one opportunity to do so is Thursday, June 27th, the next program at the Historical Society on the culinary heritage of North Florida. It'll, it'll be a great mm -hmm. program. All of our programs are, are they interesting. Are. Yeah. And Jeffrey Spear will be there to, uh, uh, to present. Well, uh, thank you, Emily Liska, uh, for being a guest. Uh, oh, I enjoyed it. Sitting in the other chair. And happy 191st birthday, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. And that's our show. You can find out more about Jacksonville history at our website, jackshistory.com, or by calling 665-0064. And as Emily likes to say, until next time, we're history. <laughs>